I'm Nathan Merritt. I'm on board with tackling domestic violence campaign. There is no room or excuse for any kind of violence. He's gone. Here he goes. Look at this. Oh, I nearly got him. Keep going. Keep coming. Ten. Nine. Right. Nice. Well done. Good. I'm going outside. But just like in that drill there, as soon as you start opening your mouth, yeah, start talking to the person in front of you, beside you, the people that are around you, start being the eyes for the other person. All of a sudden, it all starts coming together. We stop making mistakes, it all comes together nice and fluently. Yeah? It's exactly the same with domestic violence, it's exactly the same with this program that we're doing here. It's all about communication. Six v three, come on, come on, come on, look at this. Oh, there we go. Do another one out, six v two now. The tackling violence been going six years and it come off the back of Linda Burney being um, with the Department of Community Services and making a difference through Rugby League. It's about delivering the program and letting people know what domestic violence is and first and foremost it's a crime and when we're out there delivering that it's it's not a black and a white issue it's a, it's a social issue. The reason that I'm involved everyone is I describe it as a vehicle for good um, and this is one of the most outstanding examples I think nationally of how Rugby League can actually change lives and change communities. It's extraordinarily brave, uh, particularly in some of our communities where we know DV is such an issue. Um, and to say, take a stand uh, is beyond powerful. One in three women will be affected by domestic violence and or sexual assault in their lifetime. Men need to know that violence against women kills. Okay, here we go, start giving the instructions. You gotta talk, you gotta talk. Well, when we look at the communities that's involved in uh, rugby league, there's high rates of domestic violence. So it was almost like common sense. Well, why don't we use something that the community loves, engages with, to be able to deliver this message? And rugby league was that fit. <laughs> domestic violence is a social issue. So we're using prominent people uh, through the rugby league circles and within their communities to, to deliver this message. And obviously using the rugby league vehicle, we've had uh, people like Joey Williams and Alan Tung and, Tony Butterfield, Nathan Blacklock all be a part of this program, so it's one of those things where the, the rugby league profile is helping the um, domestic well violence well cause. Well if you don't take the message on board that we're trying to deliver here today, people are going to continue to keep on getting hurt. The effects of domestic violence are one in three women being affected by domestic violence, it's going to continue. So it's important that we take those messages off because when we listen, when we take on the instructions and we work together, Yep. then we work our way through it, we work our way through the problems. We can commit ourselves to living a really healthy, violent-free life. And how do we do that? By interacting and sharing in workshops like this. We ourselves may have experienced you know, stuff that we want to change. Every generation wants to change up what, what was in the past generation. Parents want their kids to stay longer at school if they had left at a young age. You know, um, they want their kids to do uni, do college, whatever. And you know, with that, we have to provide a really safe environment for our children to be able to achieve those goals. So because we've got 16, 17 Aboriginal players there, they've all been clued up on what they've got to do. We're talking to these young men about domestic violence. We've got blokes like Tyrone Peachy, Jamal Idris, Jamie Soward, and what I find, because I do a lot of work out in the community, is that I can talk to these young kids and say, you can talk to them, bud, but when a footballer says something to them, it's like gospel to them. It's unbelievable how much, and we're just trying to get into our players' heads that how much these kids look up to football players. The code of conduct can be specifically made to those individual clubs. Example, deadliest footballer, but has a, has a chequered background, well that code of conduct then gives that club the opportunity to say, well if you don't tidy up your mess, you can't be a part of our club. So to have those processes in place and saying, well, they never had that at my other club, well we've got it here, you want to be a better man, you go through this process, six weeks time, you can come back and you can be a part of our club. Code of conduct, very powerful. We had 
one player he got suspended for three three or four games because of domestic violence and leading up to the grand final he actually sat himself out took it upon himself to sit himself out for another two or three weeks just so people don't have anything to say about it so yeah, he took it upon himself to sit him out sit himself out for three games before the grand final ball out in front i like it try 6v1 oh, here we go i just need everybody to come back in here for a second i just need to set that scenario back up to 6v1 now the teaching principle to it is so we had six on six you feel pretty comfortable don't you when you've got you know in that short amount of space there you've got plenty of people around you you feel pretty confident don't you and it goes into six feet five four three two until you're on your own and you feel pretty vulnerable don't you you got no support around you and you're defending against all this and we see that with domestic violence that often the person that's left to fend for themselves is the one that's most vulnerable and often that's a, a young lady so as yeah, people in our footy clubs, in your footy clubs that are out there, you need to understand that that person that's crying out for help is the one that's most vulnerable. And you need to, as your team comes back into you here, come back in, come back in, you need to rally around that person. You need to rally around them and give them plenty of support. Those teams that have been a part of it from day one to now a team like Walgett that have had 16 of the top judicial um, people in their places come out and sit on the riverbank and talk to those rugby league players about how that program has changed. So they've got the police involved, the education, uh, a lot of the women's services, so that those, those services know that those men are a part of that program. There's people in prominent positions know that if someone's committed an offence because of that rugby league team has endorsed other um, fraternities to come in and be involved. So it's not just a rugby league club, it's a community club that's involved in this domestic violence program. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good, 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 good. That's it. If we set the right example at the start here, if we have this conversation here today, and then you go and have this conversation with somebody else, and you have this conversation with somebody else, with somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, instead of talking to 30 people that were in the room today, we're having to talk to, you know, 3,000 people. We're having this yarn. If we set the right example in our footy clubs, Yep, that flows on to our reserve grade, our 18s, our 16s, our juniors all coming through. That is a flow on right through our, our communities. And that's what our program's all about. Yeah. Yep, very good. Thank you. I'd like to think that we made a difference in these communities over a five year period. And I think that like, I'd like to think that we made a lot of lifelong friends that will be able to say that this program has changed the way we, we see and value what domestic violence is doing in our community through a game of rugby league. And those ambassadors, your Alan Tungs, your Nathan Blacklocks, your Joey Williams, have given up their time to come out and talk about something that not a lot of people talk about, but it's so powerful in our communities. And yet we're helping the police, we're helping the education system, we're helping all these people within that community be better people through a game of rugby league. And it gives us a lot of pleasure. But you just see the stress that it puts on the other person. Better outcomes, yes, the results on the field um, and off. You get to have a yarn with the players one-on-one. -on -one. Um, where before they wouldn't, wouldn't talk if they had problems. Most of the boys are pretty good with it. They um, get involved and uh, uh, like to see their pictures and that on the TV and on the posters, so it's good. Um, the amount of people that it affects, not just the people who are actually involved, but family and bystanders and the community really. Yeah, since Harkin the Domestic Violence Program comes in, we've, we're, more, we're more aware of it. So when people are drunk, we're not like not as violent towards each other and we're actually understanding that it's, it's, yeah, it's not the right thing to do and we shouldn't do it anymore. You can notice a difference, it, like you go out, drink with your mates, like footy players and the next day you hear they've bashed up their women, but you don't hear, you hardly hear it now. Yeah, we've had in the past where our team was fighting against each other you know, most of the time and that actually lost a lot of games for us. So for them to turn it around and, you know, just say make up for it, you know, it turned the team right around and, you know, just pushed them towards the grand final. Now, I suppose we could sit down and talk about this in, in so many ways and shapes and forms, but I suppose for me is to put my hand up and say I want to make a difference in regards to bringing up a child in a, in a safe, happy environment and knowing that that young boy or girl can go, for, go through and fulfil his or her dream about whatever it is he wants to do. 
And in those small communities, if it's a simple thing like rugby league that's going to give that kid an opportunity through his father or his uncle or his pop, then that'll give that kid an opportunity and saying, well, I'm leaving while Kenya. While Kenya ain't going nowhere, it's always going to be there. I'll come back and see how it's going. So this is the power of what rugby league can do in, uh, I suppose, a little program like this. I'm all for second chances, but only for those who are willing to change, get further education and understand what it means to be a respectful member of society and engage with respectful relationships with women. One non-negotiable in life is that men have to have respectful relationships with women. We have to set the benchmark. It's up to us to set a standard that our kids will learn from. <laughs> 